so um, I'm going to do my best here to um, it's it's a dry subject. I'm actually talking about something that I'm not. It's not what I do. I do not clean with chemicals. So um, I'm trying to help empower all of you to understand why you need to consider what you are cleaning with, because there are so many um, ramifications really to all of the, the products that we bring into our house, especially right now. Um, COVID is nobody even that we know probably has ever lived through this kind of thing. So we're doing the best that we can. And I am far from an expert on COVID. <laughs> but if I if I can help you a little bit, <laughs> I will do my best. If I don't know answers to your questions, I am happy to do some more research because I love doing that stuff. Um, and I will get back to you with answers. But um, so uh, on to our presentation. So when Adrian asked me what, what my topic was going to be, I, um, I, I thought about it because I was like, okay, well, I don't want this to be all salesy. Um, yes, I work for a company and we sell products that um, you can use for cleaning, but I didn't want it to be all about that. So I'm pretty much not going to talk about my own business even remotely here, um, but I'm talking about why people might come to my business. Um, because for me, it, it all started, why I joined the company is I, I, you spray the chemicals in the bathroom, I couldn't breathe. How do you clean the room when you can't be in that room? Breathing is not a luxury, it's a necessity. So that was kind of the start. But what really, really kind of tipped the scale for me was about four years ago, um, my mother had cancer and she, she was fine. She got over it, but I spent hours and hours in the chemo suite. I went to every doctor's appointment, every chemo treatment with her. And I was sitting there looking around going, how many of these people do not need to be sitting here, but we're here because of things that we're doing and we think we're doing the right thing. And why is that? Because we don't have all the information that we need. So my goal here is just to give you the information so that you can make the best decision for yourself. I am not saying do not use chemicals. That is a personal choice that every single person needs to make. I'm just trying to give you the information that I certainly didn't know. And I'm assuming a lot of people don't know. So um, for example, I mean, before I knew anything about Enyo, I, I mean, I used the Lysol wipes and everything like that. I had never read the instructions on the labels. Did anyone else? <laughs> like you, you grab the wipe, you slather it around the surface and it dries out. So you grab another one, right? And you keep going. But that's not even how you're supposed, to, that's not how they tell us to actually use it. So we're not even getting the effect that we're supposed to be getting with it. All we're doing is smearing those chemicals around. So there's so much information that we don't know we don't know. And that's kind of my goal here. So it's going to be a little bit probably dry. And I apologize, I do need to read because this is not my specialty. I can tell you the other side, no problem. But um, if, if it gets to the point where you're like glazing over, wave your hands or, you know, put something in the chat so Adriana can wave, wave her hands and I will skip over some of the dry stuff for you. So, okay, here goes. Thanks to COVID-19, we're spending a lot more time in our homes. We're often working at home, we're cooking it more at home, we're doing school at home, and we're even playing at home. So it makes sense that our homes need a lot more cleaning right now, especially because we're doing extra cleaning to take care of COVID-19 more than we would normally do. Keeping our home safe and clean is an extremely important and non-stop task. So everyone wants products that are easy to use, fast, and probably in my opinion, consistently reliable. You don't want something that, you know, it might work this time, but not work the next time, right? So most people use numerous household cleaning products, both in and outside of the home and garage. They might be uh, liquids or powders, uh, polishes, drain cleaners, paint and paint thinners, liquid laundry um, packets, uh, windshield wiper fluid, to name just a few. Um, according to the Government of Canada website, so this is the actual Government of Canada website, these types of products can be dangerous and cause burns, fires, poisonings, explosions, and other negative results if not handled safely. 
and we're bringing them into our homes voluntarily. <laughs> Uh, generations of homes have been cleaned with cleaning chemicals. Over time, the availability and variety of these cleaning chemicals has grown to the point that the grocery store has an entire aisle de dedicated to just these products. So with such an abundance of options available, why would you consider any other alternatives? And I mean, if anyone um, has walked through this aisle, and I mean, they've got them at the, the um, big box stores, the hardware stores, everywhere. You smell it, those, like those things are sealed, they haven't been opened and you can smell the chemicals. So um, I, I literally, because I am sens sensitive, I, I had the hardest time. How do you get in there to get it when you can't be in that aisle because you can't breathe? So how do we find healthy foods and personal care items with the best ingredients? We read the label on the packaging, right? But Unlike pre-made food or shampoo, cosmetics, that kind of thing, the labels on cleaning products do not have to uh, provide a complete list of ingredients. In fact, according to the Environmental Working Group, only 7% of cleaning products adequately disclose their contents. And the ingredients that are listed are not always easy to understand. This means that even if you're a meticulous label reader, understanding exactly what you are bringing into your home may be extremely difficult without contacting the manufacturer directly. And even then, you may not get a completely accurate and clear information. So why is label transparency important? Because your health is extremely important, at least in my opinion, your health is important. So when you have time, pick up the nearest cleaning product you have and read the label. Can you understand what ingredients are in it? How difficult is it to figure out what ingredients are in it based on the labeling? Now, try something for the bathroom. Does your toothpaste tube tell you all the ingredients it contains? The answer would likely be a resounding no if we were all to do this right now. Why? Because the Canadian government does not require mandatory labeling on cleaning products because there are regulatory gaps regarding the complete disclosure, disclosure of ingredients on labels of household cleaners and in fragrance mixtures used in personal care products, it's extremely difficult for consumers to know what, uh, for certain whether a cleaning or personal care product contains harmful ingredients. I mean, even when they do list the stuff, you don't even know what half of it is. You have to look up what most of the, I mean, water we get, sodium, you understand that's probably got something to do with salt, but a lot of those things, I wouldn't have a clue what they are. So if you look on the toothpaste tube, that's an actual toothpaste tube I flattened out so that we could take a picture of it. It literally lists one thing. I went online and found the other ingredients. Um, Many consumers are completely unaware of the potential presence of toxic chemicals in these goods because it's not even listed and you don't understand what it is if it is listed. Um, these toxic chemicals continue to linger in products we use daily and long-term use is often linked to chronic health issues like allergies, eczema, endocrine and, and hormone disruption and even cancer. So even the most eco-friendly inert cleaning product can, contains chemicals. What is the most important is the type of chemical and how much is present. So even water is a chemical. Think of the chemical formula for it. It's H2O, which is dihydrogen monoxide. So it is completely impossible to say that you clean chemical free because even water is a chemical. So like for me with my business, I don't say I clean without chemicals. I say I do a toxic chemical free clean. So if we don't know what's in the product, how do we know it's safe? Hazard symbols are required to be on labels, but it depends, like, I mean, there's nothing on that toothpaste, but it doesn't mean that all of those, um, those ingredients are completely benign. Um, so according to uh, the Government of Canada website, this is a direct quote, hazard symbols are on the labels of many household cleaning chemical products and in and around your home and garage, like cooking spray, cleaning products, paint and paint thinners, drain cleaners, and windshield washer fluid. So that's a direct quote. Did you notice it says most? Why doesn't it say all? So there are three parts to hazard symbols. And I mean, I was never taught any of this. So I found it interesting. I hopefully you find it a little bit interesting. I'll, do, I'll go through it quickly. 
So there's the picture, the frame, and the caution or signal words underneath the image. So the picture tells you the type of danger. So I'm sure we all understand what an explosive, flammable, corrosive, and poison means. If you don't, let me know. I've got the information here. But the part that I didn't understand is the symbol frame. So here in the explosive, you can see it's a triangle. The other ones are octagons. So if it's a tri triangle, it means the container is dangerous. If it's an octagon, it means the contents are dangerous. So that's something I had no clue, <laughs> not a clue. So I thought, you know, hey, you know, other people might not understand it. So then there are signal words that would be sort of down below the, pi the, the picture. Um, so they're typically either caution, danger, or extreme danger. So for caution, it means there's probably a temporary injury, um, but death may occur with extreme exposure. Danger means it may cause temporary or permanent injury or death. And extreme danger means exposure to very low amounts may cause death or serious injury. And again, we're bringing these into our house. I mean, there are lots of things that you can't avoid. You have to have certain things like windshield wiper fluid. I mean, it's hard to live in Canada in the winter without some windshield wiper fluid, right? So if this is not all scary enough, because of COVID-19 and the heretofore unprecedented global requirement for household cleaning products that are typically regulated under the Canada Consumer Product Safety Act, which is CCPSA for short, there's an interim policy to amend label requirements in Canada to aid in quicker access to these products by all of us that need it. So basically right now, it doesn't have to be in both official languages and it, quote, may be different from what is required for sale in Canada. So <laughs> we can't even trust labels right now because it doesn't have to follow the regular, the regular regulations that would be in place. So do you think cleaning chemicals can be dangerous? EcoWatch is a leading online environmental news company. So according to EcoWatch, of the 84,000 chemicals on the market, only about 1% have actually been researched for safety, which is kind of scary, at least in my opinion. <laughs> The Environmental Working Group evaluated more than 2,000 cleaning products and discovered that 53% contain ingredients that are known to harm the lungs. So this supports the finding in a recent study reported in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. And that is kind of like the epitome of, of, um, of top-notch um, and um, education and, and research for, for uh, anything to do with uh, respiratory issues. So it, they found that numerous toxic chemicals in national brand home cleaners are as damaging to lungs as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for 20 years. And that's literally just doing regular home cleaning. That's not like you were, you clean for other people. So the study followed over 6,000 participants over 20 years, testing their lung capacity regularly. And the sobering fact that we revealed was that cleaning your home with national brand cleaners as little as once a week significantly and permanently damages lung tissue. And the majority of cleaning products that are available in the grocery store do in fact contain a number of harmful chemicals such as ammonia, chlorine bleach, bleach and quaternary disinfecting compounds plus many more yes that was permanent damage as in it cannot be reversed so this graph shows the decline that they found over the 20 years so the green line is what would be considered normal decline because as we age our breathing just naturally doesn't work quite as well um, so the purple line is where's my cursor go oh there we go uh, the purple line is the decline for those that smoked, but weren't around cleaning chemicals on a, on a regular basis. And the green line shows the decline in those exposed to cleaning chemicals just as a household use. So without full testing, there's no way to know the full extent of long-term impact on your health as there are far more bodily issues affected than just your lungs. But this study specifically talked about lungs. 
So you're not asking, don't I need chemicals to clean, especially right now, because there's so much going on in the world. Uh, with the current global health crisis, cleaning is obviously extremely important, but there's a difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. And understanding this difference is critical to effectively perform each task correctly. So what's the difference, right? So this is the definition from Google search for disinfecting. People generally believe disinfecting is cleaning, but better. However, disinfecting a surface doesn't actually clean the surface at all. In fact, disinfecting a surface that hasn't first been cleaned simply does not work. Disinfectants are specifically designed to destroy all organisms on a particular surface via powerful chemicals such as bleach. These various chemicals that are used to disinfect surfaces become inactive and therefore ineffective if they come in contact with organic matter found on a dirty surface. So according to the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, organic matter or dirt, and that's like just regular wear and tear, like, you know, you're cleaning your kitchen and you've made dinner and there's just stuff on the, on the counters. Um, dirt can interfere with the antimicrobial microbial activity of disinfectants in two ways, most commonly by a chemical reaction we see between the, the chemical or germicide um, and the organic matter or dirt, which makes the, the chemical less or non-functioning. So it reduces its ability to actually do the disinfecting process, or it completely eliminates the ability to do it. So chlorine and iodine disinfectants in particular are prone to such interaction. Uh, so the second way is organic matter or dirt can actually protect the microorganisms that are on the surface from being attacked by the chemical just by acting as a physical barrier. So you put the, if you're using say Lysol wipes, you put it on the surface, but it's not actually getting to the, say somebody had a cold or the flu or something like that, you know, they cough onto the counter, you want to make sure that that counter is disinfected. But if you don't clean it first, the Lysol wipe can't actually do what it's supposed to do. So, and I mean, 100% guilty of doing that my whole life until I learned about it. So that's why I'm passing this along to you and I hope that it helps. So the effects of organic contaminants on the sterilization process were studied a lot in the 1950s and 60s. And these studies show how the microorganisms are protected by the inorganic contaminants in the sterilization process. Um, this further emphasize the importance of meticulous cleaning before any sterilization or disinfecting procedure, because both organic and inorganic soils are easily removed by washing. So just reinforcing the wash first. So this is, um, it's actually something that was put out by Enyo, but it, it's not specifically talking about Enyo, but it's extremely effective in my opinion in explaining kind of what I was just talking about. So this is just, a, it's under black light and it was done in Australia. So I can't tell you exactly what the chemical was, um, but it's a national brand one that would be readily available there. So this is a dirty surface, um, and then you can see where they sprayed a liquid uh, cleaner onto it. So much like we would typically do. Whoops. So then they just took a disposable cloth, so probably paper towel or something like that, and you know cleaned the way you would normally clean the surface, just wiping it, and and uh, making sure that the chemical is distributed all around. So after doing that, the result, this is the result. It's smudgy, sticky residue left on the surface and all the chemical residue plus the original dirt. So it kind of explains, it's not picking up all the, the potential viruses that are on that surface. It's just adding a chemical layer and making a soup out of it basically. So, by cleaning, in this case, they used an Enyo uh, fiber and cold water. By cleaning, it actually gets that stuff first. So what you want is to see your countertop, not to see all the chemical and, and dirt. So clean first, 
then disinfect if you need to, because the disinfecting process has a lot more chance to work if it's not fighting through all the dirt that's already there. So that one, it, it just kind of visually helps you understand what I was just talking about. So which result would you prefer? <laughs> I know which one I prefer. So that was just using cold water and an annual fiber. There are no, no uh, toxic chemicals, just literally tap water. So sanitizing is very similar to disinfecting in that you use chemicals to destroy organisms and first requires a clean surface to work effectively. Uh, but the main difference between the two is that sanitizing doesn't aim to destroy all organism, organisms on the surface, but to reduce their numbers to what is considered a safe level. So that's the main difference between disinfect and sanitize. So then, we go into cleaning and there was a lot more. I did not edit out parts of, of disinfectant and sanitize. That was exactly what showed. So I did cleaning and clean here because I couldn't do disinfecting and sanitizing. I had to do just the, the disinfect or sanitize. So to keep it comparable, I listed them here. So you'll see there's a lot more listed here, but the parts that I really liked were free from dirt marks or stains and free from pollutants or unpleasant substances. Those were the ones that kind of yanked at my heartstrings for that one. So cleaning is essentially removing dirt, grease, grime, and other unwanted particles from surfaces. Um, it's an integral part of disinfecting surfaces. Cleaning on a regular basis, especially poor deep cleaning, reduces the number of these unwanted guests to a safer level. Cleaning products cannot claim that they kill COVID-19 or other such viruses, but they do reduce and limit the transfer of germs and microorganisms. They will remove germs, dirt, and other impurities from surfaces. But cleaning does not necessarily kill germs but by removing them, it lowers their numbers and the risk of spreading infection. And we all now know that you need to clean first before you disinfect. So you, you can't get out of cleaning, sorry ladies. <laughs> Disinfecting and sanitizing cannot replace cleaning. You need to clean first for either of them to work. Ensuring our homes are clean is required to stay healthy. Please remember that both disinfecting and sanitizing involve chemicals containing toxic and often undisclosed ingredients that are very dangerous to touch, ingest, and inhale. Uh, these toxic ingredients are generally left behind on the surface, so each time you touch that surface, your skin is coming in contact with them, and quite often they are disturbed, which causes them to become airborne particles, which means you breathe them in again. So you breathe them in when you're using them, and a lot of us, because we don't read the instructions, don't clean the surface behind to get rid of the chemical layer. And then you come along. So say you've done your countertop, you've, you've disinfected your countertop. You put your sandwich down or something. I, you know, we all do it. You put a, 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 some food on the counter. So now the chemical residue goes onto your food or you touch the counter. Now you have chemical residue on your hand, but the process of actually touching the counter disturbs that, that filter layer or that filament layer. Um, and now the chemical becomes airborne and you breathe it in again. So it's actually, you're getting it more than once. So it's, that's why it's extremely important to pay attention to how to to use the products properly and to make sure that you're getting rid of the chemical residue because it can be very dangerous for you. So truly understanding how and when you need to clean, sanitize or disinfect means keeping your home safe and healthy, which in turn helps keep you and your family safe and healthy. So according to the Canadian government website, there are some safety tips that are respected uh, with respect to cleaning chemicals. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these because you glaze over, right? But um, I have all of this if you want to want to see it later. Uh, so some of the important ones were um, to read the label. So we already know that not all the ingredients may be listed. So I guess that basically just means do your best. 
um, maybe you need to do some research before you actually go to the store. Look for the hazard symbols. Uh, check to make sure that the products don't contain chemical ingredients that you're sensitive or allergic to. And that's a big one because I know for me, I have scent allergies and I have all kinds of other things and there can be hidden things in there. So it's really important if you know you have scent or any other kind of sensitivities or allergies to make sure that you do know what's in there. Um, sometimes you might need to contact the manufacturer to find out that information, because although a lot of the times you can find it online, it doesn't mean that you will find it all. Um, but the, the important thing I thought was check to make sure the products um, are not uh, banned for sale in Canada or recalled. So basically, just because it's in a store doesn't mean it should be in that store. So that's that I thought was kind of important. So um, for using the chemicals, these are their uh, suggestions. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of them make sense. Follow the instructions, don't mix chemicals, you know, um, make sure you have proper ventilation, which is easier said than done. We live in Canada and we just, well, okay, Jill doesn't, it might be easier for you. But um, in Canada, it's winter. <laughs> like we're just kind of like, it, the, yesterday it was cold here. <laughs> I don't, I can't just open all of my windows while I'm cleaning. And I mean, it's easier to open, um, like in the in the bathroom and in the kitchen, you have your, your ventilation system, but you don't in like, you know, your bedroom sort of thing. So it can be harder to properly vent, ventilate areas when it's winter and you can't just open the window. So do your best though, because it really can affect you. Um, use protective clothing such as goggles and rubber gloves. Now, how many of us use goggles when we're cleaning, really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think, well, I don't think I actually own any other than that we have them because of my husband's business, but I don't have them in our personal stuff. Uh, wash your hands with soap and water. And it's actually been proven that washing your hands is more effective than using antibacterial um, products. Um, it's the mechanical motion of washing your hands. That's what it is. Washing your hands with soap and water, you're rubbing them together. And that motion is what is lifting the dirt and the, the viruses and debris and particles and everything off of your hands. So that's why it's actually more effective. Plus, a lot of people don't actually use the antibacterial. Um, I don't even know what you call it. I don't own it. But you know that stuff you put on your hands. Um, a lot of people don't read the labels and read the instructions. So they're not actually using it properly. So you're supposed to use a certain quantity um, and let it dry before you touch anything else and then clean, wash your hands behind because now you've got chemicals on your hands and you don't want to ingest any of that. So most people aren't even actually using it properly. But that being said, if you're out and you just don't have the opportunity. You, like sometimes you can't get to a, a, a faucet to be able to wash your hands. It's still better than not washing your hands. Um, remember that child resistant does not mean that children can't get near it. So that that is important. And to teach children about the hazard symbols and that if they see any of those, it's dangerous and don't touch them. Um, but the part that kind of struck me was program emergency numbers into your home. Now, remember, this is the Canadian government website. <laughs> so it's very important, but doesn't it scare you to reconsider using some of these products if you need to have emergency numbers pre-programmed into your phone just in case? <laughs> that, I don't know, that scared me when I read it. I, I was like, it makes sense, but it scared me at the same time. So for storing products, store in your original containers, keep all the safety information, keep out of sight and reach of children and pets, which is easier said than done for some things. Now store paint, solvents, gasolines, fuels, varnishes, and other products that may release harmful fumes or catch fire outside of your home. Um, so where do you keep them? <laughs> um, we live in Canada and it's cold outside. And things freeze in the winter. So if I'm not keeping it in my home, where am I putting it? So if possible, store products in a separate building that is not connected to your home's ventilation system. So, okay, does that mean a separate shed or something like that? Um, 
avoid storing chemical products in areas with fluctuating temperatures. Okay, we just went through winter. We can't have it in our house. Uh, Jill, do you have suggestions for us? <laughs> you don't go through our, our, our climate changes quite the same way, but even you have cold days, right? So I don't understand how you can reasonably do what they're suggesting that you do. And if anyone has any suggestions, let us know. Um, so for disposing of um, not just the chemicals, but the containers themselves, follow your municipal guidelines on how to dispose um, of the chemicals and other hazardous waste. So many people have no clue that the packaging for your cleaning product is actually considered hazardous waste and you cannot put it in your recycle bin and you cannot put it in your garbage. You have to take it to your local hazardous waste base. So I'm in Barrie. So we, I have, because part of what we do um, with our company is when we're doing big events, we tell people, bring your chemicals, we'll dispose of them properly for you. So I've taken great big recycle bins full of, of regular stuff like um, Comet and I'm trying to think of, I don't use them, so I don't, like scrubbing bubbles, things like that. Um, I've taken them, for us, you take it to the dump, but you go to a completely separate area and you literally put it all out onto a table and they sort it all out. So it's a little more cumbersome than most people thought. And why do you need to do that? Because it can actually be harmful to the environment if that goes to the regular dump. But most people don't do what should be done. It just gets tossed into the, the garbage bag or the recycle bin. Never burn uh, chemicals or, or their containers because you're now changing the, uh, the chemical and releasing it even more into the air. So it can be extremely dangerous. So pour the don't pour the contents down the drain unless directed. So my question for this one is, <laughs> How do you re rinse out your cleaning cloth if you're using a, a cloth that is not just like paper towel? But also, how do you rinse out the bathtub or shower after you use chemical cleaner on them? Because that water is going down the drain. So I'm not 100% sure how to follow that one myself. <laughs> um, and don't uh, reuse empty containers. That one sort of makes sense because it's had kind of nasty stuff in it. Then reduce waste by buying only what you need. And my question for that is, there, there are a few exceptions, but for the most part, you don't get a lot of variety of sizes on the packaging, right? You buy what is there. Now, if you have one tiny little thing that you need to clean, you've got a ton of leftover stuff. So what, like, you can't just buy you know, the two millimeter, milliliters that you need, you have to buy the whole bottle. So although it's a good idea, it's not really feasible. So how are you exposed to chemicals in cleaning products? Uh, so typically you're exposed to chemicals either through inhalation or through skin. Now, I mean, ingestion is part of that, but it's kind of a combination of the two of those. Um, and hopefully you're not drinking chemical cleaning products. Um, and if you are, let's have a chat. <laughs> so inhalation. Uh, inhalation exposure to cleaning products is generally uh, via volatile orga organic compounds or VOCs, but it can occur in several different ways. So I actually spent some time last night trying to figure out what some of these things meant, and it was not easy. I actually went and tried to find the specific research paper that this refers to. And even then I didn't understand exactly what they were talking about. So I'm giving you my best interpretation of what some of these mean. So uh, your inhalation can occur via airborne droplets. So that makes sense. I'm sure everybody understands that one. Um, altered surface. Um, so um, my best uh, explanation that I could find for that one was, um, Think of a place that has a bunch of nicotine on the walls and you're going to clean it. So then that nicotine comes off of the surface and is back into the air. Uh, chem chemical transformations, which is where some substances disappear and new substances are formed. So um, think of the, the 
scrubbing bubbles kind of thing. You spray it, it comes out a liquid, but it transforms into a foam. So that's a chemical reaction. Some things are get going off and creating something else. Uh, inappropriate mixing. So just, whoops. Um, so just um, mixing chemicals together that shouldn't be mixed together. Suspension of wear products is basically um, when a chemical creates a film for protection. So sometimes, yes, you do want that, but it can actually lead to you um, breathing in chemicals long after you've done the actual cleaning part of it. And then um, suspension of powders. So that's um, a chemical is put into a basic powder to allow for easier use. So think of carpet powders, um, like the disinfecting ones. Um, and then volatilization, which basically just means evaporating or dispersing of the vapor. So uh, VOCs are carbon-based compounds that turn into vapor at room temperature. Uh, they're released from liquid and solid materials, and they can trigger irritation in the eyes, nose, and throat, headaches, nausea, loss of coordination, and damage to the liver, kidney, and the central nervous system. Anyone exposed to these VOCs may be affected, but for anyone suffering from asthma, allergies, or other breathing issues, it can actually uh, be an even greater issue because it can cause a really severe attack. Uh, with respect to cleaning products, VOCs can come directly from the product. It can be the result of a secondary reaction or be released from pre being previously cleaned or previously used to clean. Uh, consumers consumer usage of cleaning products can lead to irritation of the airways, potentially exacerbating already existing asthma. And that's why it's so hard for people with asthma to actually do some of this cleaning because you literally can't breathe. So the three ways as discussed are primary, secondary, and tertiary. So my explanation is for primary, picture yourself cleaning the oven. You're breathing in the fumes from the chemical cleaners you're using after you spray it. For secondary, you are the person that walks into the room when somebody else is cleaning that oven. You're not right there. You're not getting it as, as concentrated, but you're still breathing it in. And tertiary is you, whoops, you've cleaned the oven and um, a couple hours later you go, you open the oven and you still smell it um, or you touch something and you've come in contact with it and it's now on your skin. Um, so often um, tertiary uh, reaction is where you find the red itchy skin associated with eczema. Like picture, you know, your bathtub, you clean your bathtub and then you get in the bathtub hours later. It gets on your skin and stuff like that. So it can cause bad reactions. So skin contact, hands and arms are the typical areas affected by skin contact exposure to cleaning products, but it can be any part of the body. I just, like I saw pictures where it was people's eyes and it just looked horribly uncomfortable. Um, quite often it's a chemical sensitivity and not an allergy, but it can actually be an allergy to something in, in the product. Um, <laughs> Okay, so if you've never, okay, it says chemicals which may cause a, a reaction include preservatives, surfactants, which is a substance that tends to reduce the surface tension of a liquid, um, and fragrance. And if you've never watched the movie Stink, so it's literally the word stink with an exclamation mark, you should. It explores how dangerous chemicals found in common products pose a health risk to consumers. So basically he found that legally, um, if they say fragrance, they do not need to disclose what is made up of to, to create that fragrance. And it's a dry movie, I'm going to be honest, but some fragrances, so think of like your air fresheners and candles and stuff like that. Some fragrances actually start from waste. <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. <laughs> so I... It, totally changed. It wasn't something that I wanted to go and watch, but they showed it to us at one of our meetings and it, it like super eye-opening. Um, so any, anyone's skin, but especially those with sensitive skin, um, when you're exposed to the cleaning products can uh, develop a red swollen itchy rash that dermatologists call contact dermatitis. So um, this is kind of one of the, the uh, pictures that I could find about uh, contact dermatitis. Um, so about 80% of anyone diagnosed with 
contact dermatitis is actually a result of an uh, irritant reaction, typically from um, chemicals. Um, it's not life threatening, but it can be extremely uncomfortable. And other symptoms could be dry, cracked, scaly skin, bumps and blisters, swelling, burning, or tenderness. So um, they do recommend you wear proper personal protective equipment like rubber gloves if it's something you're handling or you know if it, if there's a worry that it might splash make sure you've got something over your face follow the instructions on the labels and only use the chemicals in a well ventilated area now in the 70s there was the emergence of the environmentally friendly movement so now what there are products that are labeled green um which means it's possible to buy products that are um have fewer or less damaging uh, chemicals in them, but don't confuse environmentally friendly with human friendly. So just because it says environmentally friendly doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you or better for you. Um, especially if you consider that a lot of the times they use um, essential oils and some people like me um, have a lot of uh, reactions to those and allergies to them. So you have to really watch your labels. Um, and do your research because it's not necessarily going to be on the label. Um, many of the products that keep our homes clean and germ-free can be rough on skin and not just the super powerful uh, cleaners. Even a gentle cleaner can go out, can dry out and irritate your skin if you're sensitive to it or if you use it often enough. So now consider what your hands have felt like over the last year with dramatic increase in hand washing. And you're just using soap, which is supposed to be completely safe, right? So look how much it's drying out your hands and like I've seen people with like cracks and like not just dry. So that's kind of what they mean right there. It's, it's you're using it a lot so it's affecting your skin. So there's no cure for housework but identifying um, and avoiding the cleaning chemicals that inflame your skin can reduce can, um, can at least reduce your irritation when you have to do it. So uh, the worst offenders are actually spray cleaners because you breathe it in and you can touch it. Um, but, and uh, lots of other, um, of lots of non-spray cleaners still create an issue because think of your, like your toilet bowl cleaner, it's not a spray, but it's a very strong smell, right? And that smell is a chemical. And if you can smell it, that means you're breathing it in. So if you smell any cleaning product, you are breathing it in. And that's really important. Um, quite often you'll find that um, the symptoms are there long after you finish cleaning. Um, and a lot of the times that's because of poor ventilation. So open your windows more. Um, and it's not just the individual ingredients, it can be the, the combined ingredients that cause uh, bigger reactions. So you may not have an, an issue with this one or with this one, but the combination of the two together can actually be what is as more irritating to you. Um, when you think about how long the ingredient list are, is on cleaning products, it's no wonder our respiratory tract and immune systems have a hard time coping with them. They linger in the air and they build up on our surfaces and are a major contributor to indoor air pollution. Um, so all, all chemicals can pose a danger if not handled correctly, so make sure you do handle them correctly. Um, Health Canada um, announced, so this is about a year, well no, it's probably April last year, so not quite a year ago. Um, so in um, February and March of 2020, there was, so the two months combined, there was a 58% increase in the number of reported exposures to cleaning products and disinfectants in the poison, um, poison with respect to poisoning uh, than the same two months in 2019. And we're still using all these chemicals and stuff like that. So it's it's showing that there, there's a lot to, to worry about when you're using these. Um, this includes poisoning by uh, exposure to bleaches, disinfectants, hand sanitizers, chlorine and chloramine gases. Um, but the most common involves bleach, um, which made up 38% of the calls to the poison centers in March 2020 alone. Um, so Health Canada can't say that there's a direct link between um, the increased exposure and, and, and everything. But they're saying that because people are stockpiling the chemicals and just cleaning so much more right now because of fear of spreading COVID-19, that 
is what they're attributing it to. Um, so on a regular basis, the Ontario Poison Center creates a top 10 list to identify the top um, 10 most common types of exposures, um, poison exposures managed by the specialists in poison information. So on the list for 2020, and so they have three different lists, the one for all ages, so it incorporates everybody. Household cleaners is listed as number three after pain relievers and sleeping medicines, and personal care products is listed as number five. So on the same um, thing, but for children under five on that list, household cleaners is number one, personal care products is number two, and skin creams, which I thought was kind of odd because I would have considered it to be part of personal care products, but obviously it's significant enough that it's its own category. Um, that one's additionally mentioned in spot number eight. So <laughs> it's, it's affecting us. So in, so I have a, a short little story here that's actually a true story um, case study of somebody that we all know through Enyo. She actually works with us. Um, so in 2014, um, Cheryl uh, was at her wit's end because her daughter Daisy suffered from severe um, eczema. She went to doctor's appointments. She went to specialist appointments weekly. Um, she went to allergy clinics, everything, um, because it was so uncomfortable and it was upsetting her little girl and it was keeping the family from sleeping because it was just so bad. Uh, allergy tests found things that might, in, might help her overall health, but nothing was actually helping with the eczema. Um, she had all kinds of creams. She tried everything that was available. She used the number, nation's number one uh, brand of antibacterial cleaner to make sure that there were no triggers in the house that might bother Daisy. And they, they were constantly, both Cheryl and the doctors were researching how to possibly help her. So this is her before. It was, and this isn't even the worst of the pictures. It was just one that she was able to get. Um, so she was given a, a cream, that her, the last cream that she got. And then a friend said, have you tried cleaning without harsh chemicals? And that's when Cheryl realized that she was the problem. So she got rid of all cleaning chemicals and almost all personal care products from her home. And within one week, Daisy's skin recovered. So the hospital and doctors were astounded. Daisy's medical chart now reads cured by a chemical free home. Years later, her skin is still clear. So you can see down here. Um, and she has a younger sister who the doctor said because of Daisy would have a very high likelihood of issues and allergies. And Nina is fine. She's never suffered from any skin, or skin irritation, not even diaper rash. So this shows that even though we have the best of intentions, we may be actually doing the opposite of what we want. Um, every year, children suffer uh, illnesses related to chemicals they come in contact with, whether it's accidentally swallowed, placed on their skin, or absorbed from the air and surfaces they encounter. So it can be acute illnesses like eczema, allergies, and asthma, as well as long-term illnesses such as cancer, reproductive health concerns, and psychological issues. Um, they can all be attributed to the presence of toxic chemicals in the home, leaving our families and pets at risk, but children most of all. Um, today, each, each, the average home contains more chemicals than could be counted in the typical chemistry lab at the turn of the 20th century. That's kind of scary. Um, when you look around your home, particularly under your sinks and in cupboards, what kind of chemicals do you find? Windows and floor cleaners, kitchen cleaners, soaps, hair dyes, shampoos, greens, lotions, toothpastes, other personal care products. Now consider how easy it is for you to grab those cleaning chemicals so that you can use them. They're literally under sinks, in cupboards, in laundry rooms. You want them to be easy to get so that you can get the cleaning done fast. But you're not the only one that has access to them. The Children's Health and Safety Association recommends that you keep all chemical products in a locked cupboard that is out of the reach of children. Now, how realistic is that? Remember, even water is a chemical. So, every year Canadian in Canada, 
five children under the age of 14 die from poisoning and an additional 1,280 are hospitalized from serious injuries related to poisoning. Over 55% of calls to poison control centers for poison exposure via ingestion, inhalation, or skin contact involve children and teens under the age of 19, and 55% of those occur in the home. Um, so even the most trusted brands have warnings for ingestion and exposure, and obviously children are getting to the products. So just having them in your home poses a risk for everybody. So, did you know that most chemical induced illnesses happen slowly over a long period of time? Daily exposure to the toxins that we come in contact to affect us little by little. So yes, you can have an extreme reaction all of a sudden, but it's that little bit, little bit, little bit that all builds up. Household cleaning chemicals and personal care products are among the most toxic substances that we encounter daily. And women who work in the home and therefore clean in the home have a 54% higher death rate from cancer than women who work outside of the home and have a, have a clean person come in. And that's kind of scary. Uh, the study showed that increased death rate in women was due to daily exposure to hazardous chemicals mainly found in everyday household products. And our children are also exposed to these household contaminants, but they have less ability to handle the burden of the toxins on their body. Uh, they grow, as they grow, their toxin fighting defenses and organs are still developing and they take on more toxins pound for pound compared with adults. This leaves, leads to illnesses short term and long term and are less, and are no less startling. Cancer, developmental delays, reproductive health issues, skin diseases, allergies, and asthma are all very common. Personal care products, so your shampoos, toothpaste, stuff like that, um, uh, are also contain um, many ingredients that are not necessarily safe. Um, but many of them don't actually have, like when, look at that toothpaste uh, label, it didn't have any, any warnings on it. And then, um, so here's a personal story, dishwasher detergent. When we first came out with some, I went and grabbed what I had been using before. On the label, it does not have to disclose the ingredients because you don't need it. So I went online and I looked it up and it, it said cause for concern for reproductive and developmental delays and cancer and a whole bunch of other things. And I'm like, we're doing this without realizing the possible negative outcomes. You're doing it because you want to be able to spend time with your family rather than standing washing dishes. But it's, it's like, I got rid of them right then and there. <laughs> There's no way I was using that. So I do actually recommend that you do a little bit of research into some of the things that you kind of take for granted because you're not eating it, but you're eating off of the plate and the fork that you're using to, that are cleaned with it. Um, so many varieties of soap and cleaning products are marketed as antibacterial and sometimes contain pesticides that kill the bacteria, but overusing bacteria killing products may interfere with the development of a child's immune system. We can't get rid of all bacteria. We do need some healthy bacteria. So antibacterials are, they just go a, a, on any bacteria. It's not specific which one, the good or the bad. Um, yeah, David Suzuki Foundation did a, um, a study and asked Canadians to submit ingredient lists for, now this is personal care products, and 80% of the products included at least one toxic chemical. And of the toxic chemicals, a specific dirty dozen um, that they, they set aside uh, caused problems like tumors, cancer, organ function impact, hormone disruption, and toxicity in the brain. So why not eliminate by <laughs> cutting back? Eliminate the risk by cutting back on how many of those personal care products you use in your home. Um, indoor air pollution is extremely important because we are spending a lot of time in our homes right now. We're breathing in. Um, the fr frightening reality is that indoor air quality can be two to five times worse than outdoor air. That's kind of scary, at least to me. Um, and we're in our homes, like we've just come through winter and it's the cold time. So we've spent a lot of time in our homes with our windows shut. So we're basically breathing in all these pollutants while we're sleeping, eating and relaxing in our home. And this is our safe space.
So there are a lot of different ways that indoor air quality can be, be impacted. Um, but toxin cleaning chemicals found in laundry detergents and personal care products and stuff like that um, have a significant impact on our home's air. Even artificial fragrances, um, because they've become more common, they mask odors, but they may actually be um, worsening your indoor air quality. Um, they may actually be covering up uh, an even worse issue. Besides the fact that you're breathing in the chemicals that are used to create them. Um, and children are even less able to handle the VOCs than adults are. And they also tend to be a lot more physically active. So they're breathing heavier um, and they're closer to the floor. Like children and pets are on the floor more than we are. So they just get all of those chemicals off of the floor and everything. So fortunately for parents are able to protect their children, their pets and themselves from, sorry, I forgot to change my screen here a few times. <laughs> um, Parents are able to protect their children, their pets, and themselves from inhaling toxic VOCs and can therefore improve the overall quality of air in the home. You can simply change the way you clean and the way you approach personal care. As we clean our homes daily, choosing to clean chemical-free helps minimize contact with toxic chemicals while effectively keeping your home clean and safe. So what if there was a better way? Although some cleansers are now made with more natural ingredients, what if you could remove the risk altogether? What if a clean home did not mean a chemical experiment with your family? That, I don't know, it just, that one hit home for me. So that's kind of the end of my blurby stuff. So I'm just going to give you my contact info because I do offer a <laughs> toxic chemical free way to clean. Um, I'm not here to sell about that though. But if you want to learn a little bit more, I'm there. This is how you can get a hold of me. I'm on Facebook. Uh, hang on, I've got that here somewhere too. So I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And if you want to go just to our website, there is a, a, a some of the information that I got was in the blogs on our website. Um, but it's there's there is I'm not here. It's not all doom and gloom. There is a healthier way. And if you would like to learn more about it, I'm here to help you. So does anyone have any questions? I can take a drink now. <laughs> yeah. Wow, uh, Sion. Um... I don't know about anybody else, but through the whole um, chemical situation that you were discussing, I couldn't breathe. I honestly couldn't breathe because you're right, you know, as, as mothers, as grandmothers, as women, we, we want to do the best for those around us that we, that who, who we love. Right. And sometimes our best isn't necessarily the best because we haven't done our, our research because um, we've just continued what we've been taught. Uh, we just accept what society um, has, has taught us, basically. So thank you so much for very, very informative information. Um, I, for one, um, actually use the, the, the Enjo cleaning products for floors. It was very important when I did it because uh, my first granddaughter was being born. And um, you're right, you know, they, 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 they are more, but I, I'm guilty. I should be more involved in other areas of, of cleaning. And so we'll be talking, uh, definitely. Now I'm going to open it up for, for questions. Anybody have any questions for um, Sione? I know that we have a chat. Uh, thank you, Sione and Adriana. Very eye-opening. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Thank you for sharing that. Jill. Yeah, Sione, you had said, you know, about, um, you know, what do you do in the winter in that? Well, in Arizona, it's exactly the opposite. What do we do with this summer because of the heat and everything? And then another thing is, is because of the cancer that I had and was diagnosed with, and now having a trach, everything that you just said is amplified a thousand times more. I do not go into a store down a cleaning aisle. I do not go into a department store near a fragrance cosmetic counter and all that and uh, I don't use any chemicals to clean my house with at all. Wow. 
vote. And it really is wrong with me about the cleaning chemicals and that. And they don't list everything that's on there. And another way that they get around it is they rename the chemicals so that you're not aware of ex exactly what it is. And that's the same thing <laughs> that they do with the preservatives that they put in your foods, the processed foods as well. Wow. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Jill. It's, you know, it's scary. Like we, we, we have best intentions, but it's almost like, I mean, let's face it, the companies are there to make money. So whatever way that they can make money is, is probably what they're going to do. And like the, 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 I don't, I can't speak for the American government because my research was specifically um, Canada, but I know that there are a lot of things. The movie that I was talking about, Stink, it, he's actually in the States. Um, so a lot of the information is American for that one, but it also applies to, to Canada. So I tried my best to find out like I couldn't, I spent hours this week looking for this on what the labeling requirements were for ingredients. And it literally, it says, you know, you have to have a box around this and you have to have that and you have to have that. I could not find anywhere where it said anything about how they needed to use, how they needed to disclose the ingredients. It's, it's, so they can warn you that it's toxic, but you don't have to know who, what's in it. Okay, I did see a question, but I didn't. It's, it's very, it. very, very, very sad. You, do you oh. see it there? Or I'll, I'll read it. What are your thoughts on cleaning with vinegar? So, so it's kind of like that scale, right? You've got your toxic chemicals, and then you've got water. And vinegar is probably closer to the water side, but it is still a... It's an acid and it will actually, it's, it's healthier than, than the toxic chemicals, but it, because it's an acid, it can actually harm your surfaces. And you have to be careful mixing, um, mixing it with other things. Um, so they're cleaning in the bathroom. <laughs> there may be remnants on the toilet. Um, it can actually, the, the combination can cause a toxic chemical reaction. So you do have to really, really be careful and do some research just on that. Um, so it is better than, you know, you're scrubbing bubbles, but not quite as healthy as mine. Because this is my cleaning product. Cold water. I think Jill has something else she wanted to say. Jill? Yeah, I'm not, a lot of times Jill would see that I'm a thing to clean your drain with really quickly is to use baking soda and vinegar and you create a chemical reaction with that because everything bubbles up so you really do have to be cautious about what you're mixing and in my opinion you shouldn't mix anything at all hmm. interesting yeah if, if you don't have a you know science background <laughs> You are literally taking your life in your hands yeah. because you don't know what, it might not be that you're having a reaction right now, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a reaction in a week or a month or in 10 years. Yeah, true. And you don't know what the other people, like I know when I was little, um, I had no idea that other people didn't have the, the way my, so my, my allergies affect my throat. So I don't get itchy, watery eyes. Um, my throat swells up. It's very akin to anaphylaxis but I'm not actually eating any of the products. It's just, I'm breathing it. And uh, I had no idea other people didn't go through that. You don't talk about it, right? You just assume that if, if it's happening to you, it's happening to other people. And it wasn't until I was in my teens that we found out that I actually do have quite severe allergies. And um, I, like I can, I cannot walk in those cleaning aisles. And stores, like um, think of, um, so it used to be Sears. The Bay still does it. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, I haven't been in an American store in so long, but probably like what are some of the big department stores that have like all kinds of different things? Um, a lot of the times right at the entrance is the perfume department. Mm. 
And any of us that have scent sensitivity or allergies, I literally, like my throat swells up. I am coughing, like gasping for air, trying to get into the store. So you, like, you don't know how your children are feeling. A lot of the times they can't explain and they don't know that they're feeling different. So you really have to do a lot of thinking yeah. and research, 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 research. That's the best thing that I could find because I mean, I, I found out all kinds of stuff doing this that I didn't even know about. And I mean, you grow up using all these things. Yeah, you do. It's part of the way we've been brought up. I have two questions. Um, first one is, what are your thoughts on essential oils for using essential oils for cleaning? And then I want you to, I know you're not trying to sell us anything, um, but I want you to talk about a little bit as to how can I clean with water? I mean, it's water. So good questions because I can actually combine them a little bit. So essential oils. Okay, so there's two kinds of clean. I, I can't really answer them separately. I'm gonna answer them together. Sure. There's two different kinds of clean. There's a surface clean and there's a pore deep clean. So um, think of your skin, you've got pores. All of your surfaces have pores. They're just different intensities basically like glass is probably um a smaller pore than your skin but it still has pores it's not there is nothing that is completely flat with no like little lumps and bumps so if you are not doing a mechanical clean so remember the mechanical clean is is the motion if you're not doing a mechanical clean, you're getting a surface clean. So all chemical cleaners are a surface clean and essential oils are also a surface clean. You're getting the dirt that's on the top, but you're not getting the dirt that's in the pores because it's just going on top. I'm not saying it's not cleaning by the definition of cleaning, but are you getting the best clean you can get? Because in my opinion, and I may be wrong here, <laughs> but, I don't want to clean any more than I have to. So I want the best clean I can get the first time. Because if I clean out those pores, there's less chance that dirt will catch on dirt that's already in the pores. And therefore I don't have to clean as often. And this is a little bit graphic, but it's the best way I can explain what I mean by that. So picture your toilet bowl. If you clean out it inside, if you clean the pores of that surface, when the next load goes in, there's less chance that it's going to stick around them. So then you don't have to clean it as often. <laughs> so Enyo is the only company in the world that gives the mechanical clean on all surfaces. So it is a three-step process. So it's wet, wipe, and dry. So you're gonna use cold water. So it this is, is a spray bottle. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so this is just cold water, but you can use the water out of your tap. It, there's nothing fancy. It's just cold. And then you're going to use a product for cleaning. So for lighting in here. It, oh, there we go. You can see a little bit better. And then you're going to use something to dry behind. So, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so I would spray, so this is for the bathroom. So I would spray my surface or I can wet the glove. And um, this is a glove version, but you can get, um, I didn't bring anything down. Um, not in my office, so I don't have it all handy. Um, I don't, um, you can get a version that you don't put your hands into. So you wet the surface or your glove, you do the mechanical clean and the fibers are getting into the pores and pulling out all of the dirt and debris and particles and everything. And then, you dry behind. Bacteria needs moisture to grow. If you do not dry behind, if you leave a wet surface, regardless of what you're using to clean with, the chances of bacteria growing is greater than if you dry the surface. So it's really, really, really important to dry the surface behind. Why give bacteria food? So then to clean your gloves, for us, warm water and a little soap. So I can toss this in the washing machine and I can uh, hang it to dry. So you don't use bleach or um, 
fabric softeners because hello, that's just more chemicals, right? Um, so you just wash it in hot water and then hang to dry. And they're good. we say a, approximately three years. So I have saved so much money <laughs> by getting rid of the chemicals really, because you have to keep rebuying them and rebuying them and rebuying them. And I can only imagine how much people are buying right now because they're cleaning so much more. Um, so I get a better clean so I don't have to clean as often. And I'm saving myself money. It's actually faster because if you actually clean properly, according to the label, um, so those are the instructions. <coughs> By the, the company that makes this product, most of the time you have to let it sit on the surface for a certain amount of time, it depends on what the product is, for it to actually work. Well, I don't have time to sit around waiting on a chemical. <laughs> yeah. I wait and I dry and then I go on. So um, we're, you know, a lot of the times it would take you 10, 15 minutes to clean a bathroom. I can do it in about five. And I can breathe. Like that's the biggest deal for me. I can breathe. I, I had the hardest time. I struggled so badly. I was, even with Windex, I had problems breathing. So another story that kind of um, explains this a little bit, which I think all of us, because we're female, so we probably tend to clean our faces and stuff a little bit more than maybe men. So you may not be able to tell it, but I have rosacea and I have no makeup on right now. Um, so about four and a half years ago, it was, if you don't know what it's like to have rosacea, it looks for me, it looked like I had acne all the time and I'm like, I'm an adult and it's not acne. I am cleaning my face. I have medications that I'm putting on my face prescribed by the dermatologist and I still have this and it just like I, I have entire trips where you do not see a picture of me because I was so ashamed of the way my face looked. It made me feel so horrible. I, there is not a chance in the world that I would be on camera if my face looked the way it did. So that was about the time when I started selling. And so my dermatologist had given me a prescription for antibiotics and she told me that I would be on those for the rest of my life to help deal with my rosacea. And I hoped to have a few more decades in me. I am not that old yet. So this, the idea of being on antibiotics for the rest of my life really scared me because I, what if I built up a tolerance to it? What if I needed that antibiotic for something far more significant than the look of my skin, but it wouldn't work because I've been using it for my skin, right? Um, because that is something that we do need to worry about. You build up tolerance to, to medications. So I thought, no, I, am, I had NEO and I thought, no, I am going to actually give this a try. So I stopped using face wash. I stopped using makeup remover and I do not need any toner. All I use is cold water and our, our skin fibers. And I went back, I had a scheduled appointment for the dermatologist. I went back six months later and she's like, oh my God, your skin looks so much better. And I, I literally, I never took the prescription in. I had the piece of paper with me and I'm like, I didn't use what you suggested. I took information on what I did, did in fact do. And she's like, you don't need me anymore. So I kept myself off antibiotics for the rest of my life by getting rid of chemicals. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, I'm not trying to sell you and I know Sion isn't trying to sell you. Do your research. Um, somebody says, wow, amazing. Um, do your research. Uh, we do spend an enormous amount of money on cleaners for our home, for our, our, ourselves. Um, and some of the, sometimes we're even putting this on our children. Um, so do your research. If you have any questions, reach out to Sion. She's always available. Uh, she's got very quick response on social media as well. So um, unless there's any other questions, we have gone a little bit over our time. So unless there's any other questions uh, for the group, um, let me know right now. If not, we're going to... Uh, what are your thoughts about the water where they 
put in chloride, oh, probably for the COVID. They're, they're, they're saying to, to add a bit of uh, chlorine bleach to, to so kill. I'm allergic to chlorine. <laughs> so I have a bit of an issue with it because I, I need to breathe. Mm -hmm. I Like I already struggled. Like I, I'm not somebody who drinks a lot of water because even if, if you look at bottled water, if it's labeled properly, it has chlorine in it. And most people would have no clue, but like my throat burns and burns and burns. So although that there are, I can see where they're coming from, it doesn't mean that it's better for everybody. And doing it without disclosing it to people can have really serious ramifications because there are, I am not the only person I know that is allergic to chlorine. So, um, even like the fluoride that they put in water and stuff like that, I react to it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. Anytime you add stuff, you're changing the, the original product. So it's not water anymore. You can't call it water if it's got chlorine in it. It's, uh, you know, you do have to really be careful. So it's, it can, um, it can be very hazardous to your surfaces too. Like, look at what chlorine does. Like, you know, if you've got um, expensive countertops in your bathroom or in your kitchen, it can actually damage them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that um, um, everyone is the same thing as using hand sanitizer and for medical reasons, sometimes not using a mask. I think we all need to um, take a pause and really understand how it might affect us personally, not just overall as a society and take measures. I mean, if I can't wear a mask um, and I'm gonna protect myself and others, then maybe, you know, I don't go out as often or I, I choose a time where there's less people out um, you know, I carry a medical note with me saying, not, not me personally, I'm just saying it over, oh, you know, in general, uh, carry a medical note, you know, informing people as to why. And same thing with allergies. I would definitely, you know, keep that in mind. Um, we want to make sure that we're clear that we're not saying not to do any of this uh, because the government um, basically is trying to protect everybody. Um, and uh, so we're not saying don't use bleach, don't use a mask, don't do this, don't do that. We're saying do your research and do what's best for you and your family. Okay. Sion, thank you so much. Uh, for uh, your time. The presentation was fabulous. I know you put a, your heart and soul in, in putting it together because this is not something necessarily um, that uh, you had just handy. You, you prepared this for us. So I am really, really grateful. Uh, grateful to the ladies that were able to join us. This is being recorded. I will pass this along to you, Sion. Um, and then we can make, make sure that we, um, that we share it with you ladies and you can share it with others um, that might be interested in learning more about this topic. Sion, did you have uh, last uh, goodbyes to say? Something that you said, oh, I know what it was. So this is just a tiny little anecdote when you were talking about um, hand sanitizers. So this is one of my annual sisters. Um, she actually does house cleaning. So um, one of her, her clients um, had a little girl that used dry erase marker on like in three rooms, it was everywhere. And she was trying everything she can. So she uses Enyo. And she's like, the customer when so if you don't know this dry erase marker turns into permanent marker if it's not actually used on a dry erase surface except it can be even harder to get off than a permanent marker so it was on a wall and and i mean she was getting it off but the client's just like i just want this done fast so they put hand sanitizer somebody had recommended that to put hand sanitizer on it it ate the paint off the wall and people put it on their hands and we, we put it on that constantly, constantly. Thank you again, Sion. Thank you, ladies. Have a wonderful Saturday. 